Hey guys, happy Tuesday. Today is the 10th of March. Welcome back to my channel. And today what we're going to be talking about, because I have seen and I know you have, there's so much conversation on both sides of the house, right? People that are preparing, people that are not preparing. And people that are not preparing are saying that people that are, are fear mongering and panic buying and vice versa. And there's just a lot of name calling and shaming and it is fully unnecessary. Everybody has their own personal barometer for when they perceive a risk or a threat. And I actually shot another video about this last week and I'll leave the info card right here. So today we're just gonna talk about real quickly, you know, what is panicking, what is preparing, what is planning, and maybe some ways to kind of logically have this conversation with people regardless of whichever side of the house you're on. If you've watched any of my other videos, you know that we are, we're preparing. We're preparing because, you know, I, I work in a field that deals with a lot of math and I want to improve my statistical chances of not only survival, but of course, mitigating the situation should it become escalated, should it get bigger than it is, which it very likely will. That's just a truth, a reality. So let me start with that. Every truth passes through three phases, right? The first, ridicule. People ridicule it. They say, so it's not possible. This could never happen. Second, is violent opposition. No way because they're they're internally processing and then rejecting because they, they're not at a place where they're ready to come to grips with that. And they say, no way, you're making it up, you're lying, violent opposition. Third stage, acceptance, when you can no longer do that anymore. So I'll give you a really quick example, right? Adultery. When someone first thinks that someone's cheating, or, or somebody tells them, oh, your spouse is cheating, they, oh, you know, whatever, you're crazy, this person would never do X, Y, and Z to me. Then there are some text messages, maybe some gaps in time, some questions, right? Violent opposition, because now you're going, uh-uh, now, now there's a threat to my own personal life, to, to the, my family structure, no, this is not true. Violent opposition. So, and then third and finally, when you've seen the emails and the text messages and maybe pictures and acceptance, you can't, you can't deny it anymore. You want to deny it, but you can no longer deny it. And so I think that there is a lot of that going on with respect to the coronavirus. Today, we're just talking about why all of this is happening and kind of logically walking through why you may or may not be preparing. And again, fully and 100% a personal decision. You do what is right for you. I mean, I guess my attitude when I have friends that are calling me saying, oh, it's driving me crazy, you know, X, Y, and Z, this person won't prepare, they're not taking me seriously. And my response to them always is, and they'll be the very same people knocking on your door, asking you for supplies. And, and that is an unfortunate statement to have to make, but I believe that it is an accurate one. And so not only has my family prepared for ourselves, but of course, just a little bit extra for maybe some people who didn't prepare. So I think I decide that I'm going to channel my energy into preparing more than I should because I, I know that there's going to have to be a buffer because there are going to be a lot of people who just simply cannot, for whatever reason, they cannot arrive at this reality in the same time frame that a lot of other people are. Regardless of which side of the house you're on, guys, People that prepare are entitled to a right to prepare because that's how they feel safe. That's why they're engaging in that behavior. And people that do not prepare are also entitled to that right because that is how they currently feel safe. So just all the blaming and shaming just kind of needs to stop. So if you're involved in that on social media, I would say take your emotional and mental energy and invest it into maybe analyzing should I, should I be preparing or why am I not preparing or, or maybe actually just preparing? I would invest that energy in a place where there would be dividends at the end of this and not just, you know, everybody just kind of attacking each other. We're in the middle of a global situation. Your communities will need you to come together on this one. Everybody's going to have a part to play. So preparation is not a bad thing. So if you're being shamed for preparing, I'm right there in the boat with you. So first, real quickly, three definitions. Panic means sudden, uncontrollable fear or anxiety often caused wild, by wildly unthinking behavior. And so panic buying, you can see when um, people sort of rush out and, and people get trampled to death. Okay, this is panic. That's what panic looks like. like you are no longer in control of your logical fa like faculties. You're no longer thinking. Clearly, your survival instinct has taken over 100%. 
and you resort to sort of animalistic survival type behavior. So that's panic, okay? Preparation is the action or process of making ready or being made ready for use or consideration. So preparation, okay, we, you know, we need to take care of something so we prepare for it. Something as simple as, oh, we need to bake a cake tonight, so we have to go to the store and fill in the gaps of the things that we don't have in our pantry, right? That's preparation. That's just, I am completely in control of myself. There's an objective, there's a goal. Here are the steps that I have to take to get to that goal. That's, that's preparation. Planning is a detailed proposal for doing or achieving something. So planning the, the actual steps, planning, like something like a move, you know, okay, so if I had to move in June, what do I need to do? I need to find a new place to move. I need to hire a moving company. I need to buy boxes. You get the idea. The actual things, the steps that I have to do before the event, because you wouldn't just want moving trucks showing up here in June and okay, your stuff is not packed, you have nowhere to go. If you didn't do any of that, you'd find yourself in sort of a questionable position. So I wanted to touch on a couple examples of things that we all prepare for, right, as human beings, just because it's just a good example to tie it back to this, okay? So some things, and I keep looking down because I have notes for myself, some things that we prepare for, just natural instinct, you know, you could not just show up for these things and expect a good outcome. If you have a test, you have to study. If you're gonna move, we touched on that. Retirement planning, you have to put away money for the future. It's not like you just work for 40 years and then retire and there's just magically, there's a little pot of gold and a leprechaun. That's, that's not how it works, okay? Bad weather, if you have snow or heavy rain, you have to slow down, leave yourself extra time. You have to make a plan, you have to prepare how are you gonna execute this so that you can reach your goal? So if the goal here, and I sort of touched on this on a video that I did last week, if the goal, and I'll, I'll link it right here, if the goal is either avoid getting the coronavirus entirely, survive getting the coronavirus, then it, it is somewhat illogical human behavior to say, well, if that's the goal, but I'm just gonna leave it completely up to chance, we'll just see what happens. That doesn't make good tactical or practical sense. If that is your goal, there are some steps that you are going to have to do to make sure that increase your ability to mitigate the situation. You can fall on either side that you would like. Obviously, if you've watched any of the other videos on my channel, you know that I, I'm preparing. My family and I are preparing. Now, I'm not a hardcore prepper. You know, this is an SHTF situation, which actually I think it could become. But, you know, I don't have a bunker built underground because if I did, I wouldn't be shooting these videos for you anymore. Um, but I certainly am a kind of person who can look around at the facts, look at the numbers and go, yeah, there's an increased risk here. And so as a result, I'm going to take some steps to increase my likelihood of achieving my goal, right? Which is survival and mitigation. So that just makes sense. Um, and then one other thing that I wanted to touch on real quickly is, I, I guess this is another thing, you know, and I've had conversations with friends on both sides of the camp. Some other people are preparing and that's great. And some other people do not feel compelled to prepare. I don't judge, okay? Do I think that it is potentially unwise for you not to prepare? Yes, I do. And I can say that with certainty because if you prepare, Let's say that you go out and you you buy the things that you need. And by the way, the other video that I'm shooting today is going to be just basic things that you need for your house, for um, your personal care, things like that. So basically a, a prep list because I've been getting lots of requests for that. So if you want to be notified about that, go ahead and click subscribe, turn on that little bell notification so you know when it gets uploaded later today. But if you prepare, it's a 100% win for you, right? What is the worst that's gonna happen? You're gonna have extra toilet paper, toothpaste, food, some medical supplies around your house. So what? Because that's great, right? Because then if it blows over, then by summer, you basically, so all the money that you weren't spending on groceries and all of those things, you now have to go on holiday with your family, go have a great time. There's no loss in preparing. Conversely, if you do not prepare, there is a 100% chance that you will have to be amongst the masses of people who are fighting at the grocery store for food. I mean, if you think there's panic buying now, wait until the number of cases in the United States goes to 1,000. Wait until the death toll goes over 100. Whatever, some people have a different 
barometer that makes them uncomfortable. But I think that that's a pretty good general rule. That's when people will start going, oh, okay, th this might be a problem. This may be a situation. So not preparing is a 100% loss for your family. So failure to prepare is preparing to fail, right? I know it's cliche, but it applies. All right, guys, so that's going to be the end of this video today. If you enjoyed that, please consider leaving a like, a comment. If you have any questions, leave them below and I will get back to them as soon as possible. If you want to be notified when I upload my other videos, just go ahead and click subscribe and click that little bell notification and that'll let you know whenever I upload a video. I hope this was helpful and brought comfort to you in some way and I will see you in the next one. Bye-bye.